Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. I have another deck here for a best of one standard event. And before we get into it here, if you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. And if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing my channel with a friend of yours. For my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back. You guys mean the world to me. I really appreciate you. Uh, the deck list will be in the description, both on untapped Dot gg and moxfield.com and then there will also be a list of my playlists in the description so if you want to see other videos that i've made go ahead and check those out i also want to give a big thank you here to all of my members so thank you so much again for supporting me and my channel this is really one of the best ways to uh, help support if you like my content and get early access um, if you want to find out exactly how to do that uh, this is exactly this is what you do if you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the, uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So these are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. Okay, so let's jump in. So this new deck here that I pulled up, um, again, I've just been kind of going through the um, list of different decks here um, that are provided by untap.gg. So this one here is an Orzhov Amalia list with a 58% win rate over 360 matches. Um, average game length of looks like five minutes. So yeah, I have the cards, I wanna take a look at it. Let's take a look. So one of the first things I noticed about this list is it doesn't run the one mana um, lifelink bat, which is kind of interesting. And it also doesn't run a full play set of Amalia. So just three copies. Um, but kind of the basic plan of this deck, if you haven't seen it before, is to just create a lot of different effects that gain life and then the sort of the power cards here are a Voice of the Blast, where whenever you gain life, put a plus one plus one counter on it. It's a two two for two to start. And then as long as Voice of the Blast has four or more plus one plus one counters, it gains flying and vigilance. And then if you get ten or more plus one plus one counters, it also gets indestructible. So kind of the idea is you play something like a Lunark Veteran on one or a case of the Uneaten Feast, which both give um, a triggered effect to gain one life whenever a creature comes into play and then use like voice of the blessed on two or amalia and amalia is one black one white two two with ward of pay three life and then whenever you gain life um, amalia explores and then you uh, destroy all other creatures if its power is exactly 20. so it kind of grows huge and then it's a way to sort of board wipe in sort of like an end game scenario um but yeah, so the one drops here, it's got four copies of Case of the Uneaten Feast, which is just an enchantment, which um, you gain one life whenever a creature comes into play under your control. And then if you gain five or more life in a turn, the case becomes solved. And then when it's solved, you can sacrifice it to uh, essentially um, all the creatures in your graveyard gain that you can cast this until end of turn. So you have like a turn to recast your graveyard. Very powerful effect. It's a very nice combo with Amalia where you can explore and just throw stuff into your graveyard until you build up a nice big yard. You have four copies of Lunark Veteran, uh, which is another great way to gain life. Whenever another creature comes into play under your control, you gain one life, and then it can be recast from the graveyard. Um, and then you have four Deep Cavern Bats to kind of attack the opponent's hand. Also one one Flying Life Link. You've got four copies of Ellis Core Sadistic Pilgrim, which is another kind of life gain effect. Whenever a creature comes into play under your control, you gain a life. It's also a 2-2 death touch for two. Um, and then whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses a life. So it's another way to potentially win con. You do have quite a few uh, more creatures here sort of in the top end than I usually see, which is kind of interesting. You've got Four copies of Gumdrop Poisoner, which is kind of a staple for this deck. You can use the instant to create a food token, which helps kind of gain life and sort of get the deck going. And then this is a 3-2 for 3 lifelink. And when it enters the battlefield, 
Um, up to one target creature gets minus X, minus X to the end of turn where X is the amount of life that you gained. So a nice way to have a little bit of removal in the deck. Also four copies of Werefox Bodyguard. So this is kind of nice because you can use this sort of like Brutal Cathar, except it has instant speed and it can't target um, fox creatures, so it can target anything else. Um, and then it also has flash, so being able to cast at end of turn just to help get rid of blockers. You can also use it to protect your own guys, so if they're about to be targeted with removal or a board wipe, you can um, protect it with your bodyguard, and then the board wipe will remove the bodyguard and you'll get your creature back. Um, you can also sacrifice it to gain two life, which is relevant for this life gain deck. So the other kind of big card this one's pushing is four copies of Resplendent Angel. So you've typically seen this more like just like an angel-centered deck, but since you're gaining a ton of life, I mean, you might as well have this in here. Um, it's a 3-3 three, three flyer for three, and then at the end of the, uh, the beginning of each end step, if you gained five or more life this turn, you create a 4-4 four, four white angel creature token with Flying and Vigilance. And then... For six mana, you can activate it to give it plus two, plus two, and lifelink. So it's sort of like another endgame win con. For your four drops, you've got two copies of Sarah Paragon. A really powerful effect where you can, um, once during each of your turns, play a land from your graveyard or cast a permanent with mana value three or less. And then uh, when that permanent is put in the graveyard from the battlefield, just exile it and gain two life. So kind of more a little bit of life gain. It's also a way to recast all of your stuff, uh, and it's also a staple to a 3-4 flying body. So pretty powerful end game effect. And then two copies of Wandering Ember, which also has the ability to gain life by exiling, can create tokens, and just kind of takes over the game. Uh, you've all seen it in blue-white control. So I, I do like the top end here. I think it's kind of interesting. For the land count, we've got... 21 land, so a little bit light on land, especially considering how much of a big pocket you've got here near the top of the curve. But um, it will give it a go for sure. You do have four copies of Restless Fortress, which is a man land that can be activated for one white, one black, and two other um, to make it into a 1-4 black nightmare until end of turn. And then whenever it attacks, the defending player loses two life and you gain two life. So... Another potential win con here against like control also helps with the life gain theme. You have um, one copy of Merix to kind of go along, make some tokens, one Iganjo, and one Takanuma for sort of extra little effects out of your lands. And then you've got um, two shadowy backstreets for a little bit of surveil action. So a little bit nice value land, um, four shattered sanctums and four Caves of Koilos, just to kind of help with the land. So you've got really good mana here, um, three basic planes and then one basic swamp. So I'm curious to see how the mana works out. 21 does feel a little bit light considering how big of a top of the curve you have. You're, you're running 16 three plus drops, so that seems like a lot, but we'll see. So all that said, let's go ahead and jump in and see if we can trophy. By the way, if you've enjoyed kind of this series of um, like best of one standard events, I find it really fun to be able to like check out new decks that I haven't really played that much, or maybe like, you know, spins on decks that I have played. Um, put it in the comments if you want to see more of this, if you want to see more kind of ladder grinding. I do like those videos also. Um, kind of the deck I've been pushing for that has been Mono White Humans, which has been doing really well. But uh, let me know. All right, so let's jump into the first round. And I am a little interested to see how this deck kind of plays out. This is a little bit of a different build than um, sort of past versions of this deck that I've run. But uh, yeah, excited. Opening hand looks good. We uh, have two mana, so that's nice. Say hello here to our opponent. Okay, that was a nice pickup. So now we can get LS Core going. And then at least have mana here for Amalia. We do need another white source, but 
Looks like we're up against mono white humans. All right, let's see if we can hit with uh, Amalia, get a white source. Okay, that was great. Really happy to see a second white source there. And I think, try to, try to decide if we want to trade with Copper Coat here. I don't think so, because I think we've got like voice and a bunch of other stuff to do with, with life. So I think we want to hang on to our LS core here. I could certainly see attacking there. I'm just, eh, I don't know. Yeah, it looks like they correctly figured out that the life gain is what it's all about. So we could wear Fox Bodyguard here, um, but that's not the most efficient. Actually, I guess we, we can wear Bodyguard and then pay the one ward cost to get back our Illus Core. Yeah, that's not bad. Could also get Angel going. Um, hmm. I feel like if they have another Brubacathar, we might want to have Bodyguard ready for later. Also, I guess, no, never mind. They've got Skrelv. I forgot they had the Skrelv there. Almost uh, played into that. Yeah, I guess let's just go ahead and get Angel going. And then I think we are happy to trade here. They want to trade there with copper coat i'm fine with it since we've got the takanuma we can get it back i like deep cavern bat it sets up voice pretty well like deep cavern bat plus maybe angel here or possibly voice feels pretty good yeah, I guess let's look upstairs and see what they're working with. So then we're one potential mana off of setting up Angel. Wow. Yeah. Adversary is pretty good. So is March. Yikes. Um, I mean, like, I think we're doing sort of okay on life, so I think I'm just going to take a march here. Just try to slow down some of their removal. And then I think we want to play out the Takanuma and drop another Angel. I guess since they have march, they can remove it at instant speed, so that's maybe not as amazing. But I think it's okay. Start working on their life total a little bit. Okay, Thalia is not what I expected them to play, but that works, I guess. Okay, so I guess let's get Voice of the Blessed going so we can get some counters. Stuck on mana, but that's sort of expected given that it's only, this deck only runs 21 land. Um, and then I guess we can just create a food token also. Yeah, because we can push with everything here since voice is going to grow. And we're not super worried about damage from them. Like, they can they can march our voice and then just push for a fair amount. But not super worried about that. We're at 22. 
Could also just play Poisoner just as a lifelinker here. I think we want to get the, the food token though. I feel like we've got time for it. I guess we can kill Skrelv here. Hmm. And then that'll open the door for our bodyguards. That's probably right. So I guess let's gain some life and then poison her the Skrelv. I guess we don't need to do it before attacks though. Unfortunately, we're only gaining four life this turn, so we're not gonna get there on the angels, but I think that's okay. And now on our upkeep, I guess if we double spell here, we can bodyguard their um, Brutal Cathar. But even with that, I mean, we've got, like, they're hoping to, like, Brutal Cathar plus March here. And that's definitely a stretch. Yeah. Want to know. Yeah, I really like the angels in this build. This feels pretty good. Maybe the, like, with the low land count, like, they're not expecting to be able to pump angel except for like super late game if like they're a whole lot of stuff to do that kind of makes sense i suppose have that just be kind of like an added benefit if you flood out Let's see if we can hit another land here uh we don't need another case Let's get some land going. Vran. Um, hmm. So I guess we can make a food token and place a case down. Seems good. Skitter is actually really nasty against us. Makes case quite a bit worse. I don't think we wear. I don't think we wear fox it yet. Um, Probably just case plus Amalia here. Okay, well that one we will throw into the yard, even though they can get it with Skitter. I think we just want more land.
I mean, bad is good, but same thing. Interesting, going for bad. Guess we could we could voice here, which is certainly decent. Uh, we could also poison her for two and take out the executioner. I kind of want to deal with Skitter though. I guess that does hold Skitter back for a turn. Hmm. Like if they have another removal and they just, yeah, I think, I think we actually want to just poison her here, even though it's not ideal, just to kind of slow down their clock a little bit. Forces them to use removal on it. Okay, that's so much for our veteran. Hopefully they're running like close to out of gas. So, okay, let's start with voice. And then let's bat them. Hopefully they only have one more piece of removal. It's a big F. Cooped up. Yeah. Campbell. They run their own Amali, that's interesting. Okay, well let's take Cooped Up. Hopefully they whiff for a turn. Yeah, they can still Edict us here, but they don't have the mana unless they drew a land to play Cooped Up. So now we can Paragon, kind of hold them back a little bit. I guess we can also Bodyguard on our voice if they when they target it with Cooped Up. Hmm. That's probably the play, honestly, because they're certainly gonna they're planning to Cooped Up next turn, I think. Also, bodyguard their skitter. That's not as interesting, though, I don't think. So, yeah, I think we just push for six here. Because then we can sacrifice it and then use that to block the skitter. Edict. Oh, that works. Oh, I guess we could have just gotten one of their tokens. That, that was whatever. It's foolish. Um, we gain a little bit more life this way, but this is only a 4-4. Four, four, so that was uh, kind of a mistake. Not a huge deal, but this could have been a little bigger. Could have been an 8-8, eight, eight, actually. All right, 
let's gain some more life. Yeah, that was actually a pretty big misplay. Um, oh well. Though they're going to need a little bit more gas to get us, though. That should do it. Sarah Paragon for the win. Yeah, almost uh, fumbled that one, but uh, the power of the deck carried us through, so that was nice. 2-0. Oh. Take a quick break, be right back. All right, 2-0. Oh. Let's see what we can do with this deck. I actually really like the top end. I feel like it uh, has like a lot of nice, just kind of ability to go long. Uh, yeah, we'll keep this hand. A little bit slow, but I think we can't turn it down. Okay, got case, and then I think Next turn, we probably just get Amalia going. If we draw land, that's great. If not, I suppose we could take another turn to like set up with Ellis Core. Maybe that's right. Okay, they've got Slick Shot Show Off. So we've got a couple options here. We could play Angel to see if they have like lightning strike to be able to deal with it. otherwise we can try to try to block their show off um kind of like case first though like case into ls core feels pretty good um i guess amalia could be like a four four you know actually maybe we just go amalia here um just so that we can have like a decent blocker here for Kumano. But I feel like we're not super hurting on life, or we won't be with these cases. So maybe we just go big with LS Core. Yeah, I think I'm open to it. Not sure if it's right. But now every creature should be gaining us three life, so that feels pretty good. And this way we have like a better chance of just like hitting our cases, solving those, um, getting Angel just to trigger uh, without having to have six mana. So I think, yeah, like taking the extra turn for setup might be worth it. Okay, we're up against Gruel Pump. So they can, they can put out a lot of damage. Definitely need to respect it. I think they only have six removal in their whole deck, so do they have the play with fire? Yeah, double slick shot is pretty scary, actually. And yeah, they just full send. 
think we don't block here though because like we're gaining life off our creatures coming into play i think we just take this so we're taking 11 dropping to 10 but i think we might have to play angel here Ooh, Poisoner is really good. Now we know we could go like Amalia and hit for like a larger creature, but I think we have to go Angel here. I guess like if we think that we can, yeah, I think I just want Poisoner on top, honestly. We just need the removal. Otherwise, I was thinking we could like put it into our yard to start like setting up case. Um, but I think we just have to respect their damage output here. And then I think we're still not blocking Kumano. Can they push 13? That's the real question. I don't know. I... Maybe this is wrong, but I think pushing a little bit of damage here. Because we want to keep our LS core, ideally just to like set up the Amalia. Maybe that's wrong. Yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate because I feel like we have to respect the attack here. Like, if they have double giant growth, it's super over. So now they've got, they're pushing 11. Man. I almost feel like we take this, as crazy as that sounds. Like, we could trade, keep some damage off, but, like, we're going to get an extra 4-4 four, four just by playing creatures next turn, right? Hmm. Actually, I guess we can't trigger this. We don't have quite enough. So yeah, I think maybe we just trade. Okay, now we can go for Poisoner, uh, get the food token, and then play Poisoner to get rid of their show off. Crap, that's not quite enough, right? We only gain... Oh, no, we gain three, yeah. Whew! For a second there, I was a bit worried. And then I think maybe we hold back Pilgrim. Nah, I don't think they can... Hmm. Yeah, I think we just push with Pilgrim here. I guess like Pilgrim like is a decent block here, but like we're at nine and like we can block with Poisoner and then like set up to get it back. Cause yeah, I think we totally make this trade here. Bodyguard is pretty great here for Ruiner. Um, we could just go sack food plus Amalia. That actually feels pretty good because then we can get our cases going. Yeah, I think I'm just going to do that. Q 
Okay, let's throw a bodyguard. Just try to get as big of a graveyard here as possible. Ooh, that's a great one. Yeah, that's going to do it. You know, it's funny. For the longest time when I was running this deck, I didn't kind of make the connection. You just want to like throw everything into the yard with Amalia, especially if you have Case, just to set those up. And uh, it makes quite a difference. So <laughs> definitely recommend doing that. 3-0. Uh, Uh, opening hand looks great. Question here is if we want to go like Sanctum. Um, I think that we, like, since we have Gumdrop Poisoner and Veteran, I feel like we just go for the cave here and then just like hope to hit another land. And if we don't, it's fine. So we just go get Veteran going. Because this way, if we don't hit, we can just create a food token. Okay, looks like Boros Convoke. All right, well, it's another Shattered Sanctum, but that, that's fine. Oh, I guess that's an instant I could have waited, but that's okay. And we're definitely not trading here, I don't think. Question is if they have the Gleeful. Yeah, they've got it. Oof. Do they have Knight Errant to go with it? Okay, well, no Knight Errant. That at least is good. Voice is pretty great. If they have Case, it's rough. Um, we don't need... I guess we could use some more land, so maybe we go Amalia here. Could also go Poisoner, and then like pick off one of their 1-1s. One it's pro I mean, it's the best use of our mana, right? So yeah, I think maybe we just go Poisoner, and otherwise we could like try to save Poisoner to deal with Warden, because Warden will become an issue. Hmm. So maybe we just go Pilgrim and just set up more life. Yeah, I guess I'm not super worried about Warden. We'll be gaining life. So I think I'm just going to be mana efficient here and just go for the Poisoner play. Like, this way they can't push quite as effectively unless they have, like, um, case or some other pump. And, like, case is still pretty brutal, but, like, there's sort of no way around it. And if we can get them to use it on Poisoner, maybe we can, like, keep Voice of the Blessed going. Yeah, there's the case, unfortunately. Case is such a beating. Don't think we can block, though. Now do we go for Amalia plus voice? Otherwise, we go, like, Ellis Core. Actually, we can just go Wandering Emperor and get rid of this Warden. Then we're getting hit for 8. So we go to 14, get hit for 8, go down to 6. Yuck. 
I mean, it might be our last chance to deal with this warden. It's just going to get out of hand. <sighs> I guess, can we, like, pace it with voice? Yeah. I mean, they'll make it, like, a 5-5 five -five next turn. If we, like, if we can hit, make our Amalia 3-3, three -three, then we can block one of these two ones. That feels pretty good. So I think I'm just going to go voice first here into Amalia. Hopefully we hit. Yeah, that's a nice one. Um, throw that in the yard. I think we need to hold this back just in case they've got some nonsense, like in case they have a recruiter or something like that. But yeah, now if they don't have any extra pump, then we can at least like make some decent blocks here. It's not like perfect, but we're starting to like get a foothold. Okay, so they're just gonna go big on Warden. I mean, that makes sense. Okay, they've got evangelist, but no recruiter. We're still in a super rough spot and they topped. All right, let's play Ellis Core first here. I guess, do we want a back street? Maybe we can, like, can we draw into land? I don't think it matters, because we need more more mana. So we can just back street this turn. Yeah, let's get Fortress out of there. Ooh, Angel is actually looking pretty good. If we get land off the top, we can start going with Angel. Is that going to be enough? I mean, it's not bad, that's for sure. Yeah, like if we save the, the life, I think this might actually be decent here. Then we just go Veteran. And then, like, next turn we go, like, Angel plus Food Token. And now we just push for seven. Try to hold the line here for a turn. As long as they didn't like draw into like recruiter or something gross like case, then we might have a chance here. They can make it. Can they make it in nine? Nine is the real question. Yeah, I guess they can. Oh god, they drew into recruiter. What a beating! All right, is that just game? Let's see if we block like this. Three, six, nine, twelve. Yeah, we're super dead. Oh well. That was like the card that we needed them to not have. <laughs> yeah, tough beats. I think we could have played that a little bit differently. 
Hmm. All right, three and one. I think if they didn't have recruiter there, we had a decent chance of like turning it around. But case was super backbreaking. Like case into knight errant. It's pretty nasty. Opening hand looks good. All right, here, since we have no two drop, I think I'm just going to go Fortress before playing Case, just to get that going. I never like to see it when they play a <laughs> treasure token. It's just like, oh, it's always brutal. Um, I don't really feel like playing like voices like a just like a regular two two. Let's get case going, even though it's like a little bit mana inefficient. Ooh, forge is forge is nasty. Gonna have to see if we can race it. Um, Ellis core is great. And I guess it like stops Scoundrel potentially, but I think we just gotta get voice going. Um, on the other hand, if they have like Lightning Strike, it's pretty awful. <sighs> but then like if we play Ellis Core and they just have like Play With Fire, it's pretty bad too. So I think maybe we just take the chance when I'm not having Lightning Strike and just like hope to like have it like a little bit open for a turn and then just try to like go over the top with voice. No lightning strike. No lightning strike. Oh, they got lightning strike. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I don't know. Now we're just getting kind of blown out of the game. Um, we really need to get hit land. And this forge is just a beating. Yeah, I think that was the turn like we needed them to not have lightning strike. Okay, they've got scorching shot, so it was kind of irrelevant. Uh, we could play Angel here, I suppose. Then we're taking four. I think we just go like bodyguard on their turn to get their token out of the way and then block one of these doofers. Double Forge. Yeah, we're still in like huge trouble here. So now I guess we can go like Emperor to get like their five power out of the way. <sighs> Yuck. Or we could do another War uh, Werefox Bodyguard. Paragon doesn't really do anything for us. I think it's just Emperor here. Could also go Were Fox. I guess if we go like Were Fox on Godric, and then like block here, block here, that's pretty good. Otherwise, Emperor, if we like exile Godric, or we could make like Bodyguard for Strike. I feel like we have to exile Godric here though. Go to eight, Bodyguard block Swift Spear, go to one. Ugh. Super gross. I think it's actually the Werefox play. Get Godric out of the way. Use this one to block the Swift Spear, this one to block the... Oh, it's Trample. Oh, God. 
What a beating. Um, forgot about the trample. <laughs> we're, we're probably just dead, honestly, to these forges. Since we don't have first strike. Yeah, Angel is great and everything, but that's not going to work. So, like, now I suppose we could just go, like, Emperor, get the six power out of the way. And then we have to, like, chump the 3-1. The oh, this is so bad. Yep, that's going to do it. Yeah, now even if we go up to four, we're still super dead. Okay, this could be the end. Hope not. Hopefully we can rally here. Three and two. Can we continue on? It's the real question. I do like the deck. I will say that, like, I definitely have seen a number of hands that have like this crazy glut of like expensive cards and I see that as a potential issue. Um, let's go, I guess we could go like turn one case and then like draw into an untapped land, but that feels like we need to get kind of lucky. So I'm just going to go for backstreet here. Uh, Poisoner is nice. I think we just want more land though, honestly. Like, we've got Case to try to get it back later. Forsaken Miner. Okay. We could bat them. I feel like batting them is never wrong, <laughs> so I'm just going to bat them. Um, we could also, like, do, like, Fortress plus Case, but, like, not having access to, like, know what they're doing. I feel like we just need to bat them. Information is, like, always better. Okay, so double cut down Gisa. Oh, Jesus. This card is such a beating. Um, case of the Stash Skeleton. Okay. doesn't really matter what they take, what we take here, because they just cut down with the other one. Um, yeah. I guess I'll just take the case, just so, like, if I take case, then they can't play it next turn. We could just go double case here. We could also go voice. I think just because they've got those cut downs that we know about, let's just set up the double case here. I guess let's push first to see what they do. If they use it now. then we'll just set up for next turn if they tap out we can play around their other cut down they probably won't but you never know I guess let's lose Emperor here. We haven't got mana for it, and these are both pretty awesome cards, so I'm just going to lose the Emperor. I suppose maybe there's a chance we should have kept it since we've got Case to get back other stuff, but these are just like our money cards, so I feel better holding them. Um, and then now I think we want to go Amalia into land to hopefully play Voice. Okay, well, 
I do want land, but not that land. <laughs> uh, Paragon is pretty interesting, actually. Paragon seems really good. I think we want to leave that on top. So I think we just take nine here, keep our Amalia going. Now I think we can Paragon. Hmm. I guess if we like use voice and hit land off Amalia, then we could play the other voice, which seems a little better. So maybe Paragon the following turn. Okay, that's a nice hit. Ooh. Yeah, bat seems good. I think we just want to set up our graveyard, though. We're at 11. Yeah, we can start pushing with Amalia here, I think. I guess depending what we draw, we could potentially swing for lethal in the air. Forsaken Miner, what does this thing do? Sure. Um, we don't care about their skeleton. We don't want them that, we don't want this to die. So I think we just block with the 6-6 six, six over here. Poisoner is pretty nice. I guess let's start with Paragon. We don't care about this skeleton. Actually, never mind. We can just kill them if we do this. So we just play this, and then that's enough. We don't even need to make the food. I guess it doesn't hurt making the food, so we might as well. And then now we can gain more life and just, yeah, they're, they're super dead. Still on the board, four and two. All right, four and two. Maybe this deck can make a comeback. Um, yeah, opening hand looks good. We've got two mana. I'm a little leery about all these um, sort of later drops, but hopefully we can get there. Um, the Mirak is, is a little... Uh, but I think with two land, we got to keep it. Got to try it out. It 
At least we can set up a food token there on one. Like, I love the power level of some of these later drops. Um, I'm not sure about the land count, though, with 21 sources. I do think that the... Um, the three three angels that can buff for lifelink. I think that they are a nice addition. I don't know that I'd do like a full play set. Yeah, I guess we'll see. Well, I guess we'll do this end of turn. Okay, so much for the Wandering Emperors. <laughs> oh well. Well, at least he won't be able to play Wandering Emperor. He'll only have three mana next turn. Um, we could go for, like, Illus Core this turn. I kind of just want to get this Restless Fortress going, though. And then we get his Poisoner again. Wait a second, he can just cast it? Oh, no. I was super worried for a second there. <laughs> Alright, so I think we probably go for like Elis Core and then try to get Poisoner going to get rid of the tiny bones. There's a chance he gets our Elis core, but I don't really have a good answer for that. And I do want to kind of get something down on the ground. There's even like a decent chance he gets the Elis core here. If he has like go for the throat. Okay, so he had Virtue. Eh, yeah. Maybe we should have just waited. Guess now we can go like voice plus gain some life. Um, it's decent. I don't really want to trade voice for tiny bones though. <laughs> but now he can start casting Wandering Emperor. Ugh, yuck. Yeah, I guess we just trade voice out here because Angel is a little bit better for late game. Since he's tapped out, we probably just gain the life now so that if Casey has cut down, we can play around that at the very least. Man, he's just got it all. Oof. Okay, well now we can at least assure the demise with uh, Poisoner. Okay. 
Unfortunately, now Liliana gets our last card, which isn't great, but... I guess next turn at least we like clear the battlefield. Yeah, okay, we're taking that all day long. Um, that's fine. Now we can go voice into poisoner, which feels pretty good. Threaten Liliana. It's still not looking great because he has like Liliana. He can get rid of our poisoner if he has more removal. It's really rough. Well, I think we just start making Murex tokens here. It's like not ideal, but I don't want to trade. And I don't think we sacrifice our Restless Fortress just to get voice up 2044. So he probably fields the Murex, I would assume. Oh, interesting, okay. Ah, uh, that's fine. I guess we could have waited on this here, but he's tapped out, so it's not that big a deal. Um, Let's get a swamp. He's definitely getting close to virtue, which is not exciting. I'm still not making a trade here. Okay, that was a nice pickup. So now we can do veteran. Um, we can push with fortress or make a token. Um, I'd rather push here, I think, just to get the damage going. So he's a turn away from getting Virtue going. If he wants to push for seven, I'm just taking it. Yeah, I think we're fine. Ganjo, eh, I think we can do better. All right, so we are at six, so it is a little bit sketchy attacking with everything. Um, definitely want to attack with these two. I guess, do we hold back veteran? Like, if he... I guess if he kills veteran and runs like underdog, so we go to eight. Actually, I guess we go to eight, we can survive one attack. So I think we just push.
try to set up the kill. So now he can get us to one with underdog. It's a little bit risky, but I feel like I feel like it's the move. And like if he taps out for virtue, then he's just dead. Yeah, that works. That works. Man, he had us on the ropes there for a little while. All right, five and two. It's nice to see this deck is like decently resilient. Yeah, so I really I'm I'm a huge fan of like the full playset of the the Restless Lands. Um, they are fantastic, and they were definitely great in that game. But I think with like, with like that many come into play tap lands, you do want a higher land count, just so you're like not so offset with like openers that you only have like two lands. Uh, this hand is great though. Yeah, because now we can go like turn one case and then like tap land, turn two case, or poisoner, whatever we want to do. I think we just want to go for case though. Just make it simple. I think this is the um, the Simic deck that runs. Oh, Murfolk, interesting. Huh, okay. That works. I guess we could go for Case and see if he wants to sack Merfolk. Sort of fine with that. Otherwise, we could do like Poisoner on his turn and see if he wants to go for it. I think I just want to set up Case, though. If he wants to sack, it's fine. Spelunker? Oh, it's a Merfolk, yeah. Um, they probably have, like, Bounce, Decent Removal. Do we just go for Illus Core here and just, like, try to fully set up? We could start going with Voice. We're probably going to have to replay it anyways. So maybe we just get it down now and then it gets bounced and, and that's fine. Otherwise, like, if we go, like, Illus Core, we have a higher chance of, like, flipping Case, but I don't think that matters that much. I think we just go for the, the Voice here. I think like two triggers is enough to kind of get this going, but we just kind of want to start moving on life total. He's almost for sure going to bounce this or, you know, do something like that. Ooh, nasty. Okay. That's rough. Um, I guess we can just trade Illus Core with it. If he makes it flying, I suppose we can like Wear Fox it or something like that. Yikes, double hit, C-Note, Scout, and Stalwart. Okay. 
Now, I guess since he's tapped out, we can just go for like the bodyguard play. Otherwise, you can go like Poisoner plus Amalia, which isn't bad. That's not bad. I think I just want a bodyguard here since he's tapped out. Hmm. And then I think we're happy. Um, I guess we hold back. Actually, we're, we're at 21. We're gaining decent amounts of life. We'll probably trade two for four here. I think we're okay with that. Next turn we can kind of get going with Amalia. I guess it depends on if he holds up Counterspell Mana. All right, he's representing Counterspells. Um, I guess we just go like Illus Core plus Amalia here, and that's fine. Ooh, nice. Uh, Bodyguard is great, but I think we want to start filling up our yard since we've got these cases going. Let's see, can case just redo replay creatures? Can't remember. Creature cards. I suppose we could keep Wandering Emperor. The thing is, it's so easy for them to counter it. It doesn't feel really good right now. We could also just attack here, um, and then that would open up voice. I feel like we want to do that anyways, so because then we can like recast this and all this nonsense. So just get the free flip. If they just want to take two, that works also. What have we got in the yard? Just uh, Elus Core and Rare Fox. That's pretty good. Do we just trade here? I don't think we care. I think we just take it because we want to have enough life gain here to go like gumdrop into. Hmm. Actually, I guess gumdrop doesn't really do it. But I think we don't care about the three damage. Now we can go Angel plus Sack Bodyguard. Oh, this is actually gonna be great. Um, okay, so let's Sack Bodyguard. Actually, I guess we just kill Amalia. Like we could Angel here, then get an Angel. That might even be better, actually. 
Yeah, I mean, like, getting a 4-4 Angel feels really good. Killing their Amalia is sort of ho-hum. So I think we just go for the Angel play. And now we can send here with our Elus core. Some free damage. Feels pretty good. Man, what a beating. Whew. Nice little 12 12 voice of the blessed. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny, like, killing Amalia isn't good enough. I guess they could have, like, board wipe. Maybe board wipe does it. I mean that is that's pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. Is that all four grafted identities? I guess this three. So we need like Wandering Emperor to deal with that now. Yuck. Oof. Okay. I guess we go to like plan B, just like make a billion angels. Could also just kill the Amalia here and then like get it back and do a bunch of nonsense. I think we have enough stuff to cast though. I just I don't think we just care about this 5-5. Five five. Alright, so Deep Cavern Bat is three. Poisoner is another three. That's enough to get Angel going. This thing is just, yeah, it's indestructible. Yeah, okay. I think we just set up to make a billion angels. That's the play. Tidebinder, Mind Singer. Can control the target creature, good God. Yeah, I think let's just get rid of this Mind Singer. And then I guess we kill the Amalia. And just set up. So now if they want to like tap out for Knight Errant, we just Alpha Strike. I guess they can use Tidebinder on our Resplendent Angel now, which is kind of annoying. So if we sack case, what do we get back? Probably just bodyguard. Do we have enough? We have enough for one bodyguard. So they can tide binder it. Hmm. 
where we get to start making tutus. Yeah, I think we go for the t for the uh, bodyguard play. I guess they can tide binder this also. That's fine. Um, I think we just case and response, or I, I guess is it like for all the cases or just for that particular case? Yeah, I guess I'm going to do this in response then. And that should do it. Uh, I guess let's play Amalia too, why not? Oh no, we can't now. That should be enough though. And then we've got 12 in the air. Yeah. That'll do it. Yeah, we have, yeah, we've got lethal in the air. Nice. Six and two. Final boss. Yeah, I will say that those, uh, Oh god, what are they called? The the Wear Fox things have been really good. And it's like decent protection against board wipes, even like exile effects, just because you can protect your own guy that way. Uh yeah, opening hand looks good. Nice like double bat turn. Lead out here with the sanctum. Triple bat. Um, see, I'm going to cave here because I don't know how much white mana I'm going to need. Okay, wow. Double recruiter. So, I guess we have triple bat. So, I guess we take reinforcements first. Then they need to, like, draw into a artifact production they need a top deck decently well yeah i think it's probably right to take reinforcements here like they have a decent chance of drawing it i suppose if they have like a creature that makes nice I think we just keep ripping our hand apart. Um, what do we take next? Probably demolition. I guess angel's not bad, but we have a ways to go before that gets big. Also, we could just do voice of the blast and start pushing. I kind of like that. Yeah, I think I think just getting like a board presence here is actually decently a de decent idea. This might be the wrong move. I'm not sure. Like, if I have case, it's pretty rough. Or it can be rough. Ah. They had the Epicure. Okay. All right. They got the demolition off. But now we just try to aggressively take out the recruiters, I guess. Although, thankfully, they can't get into the air just yet. Yeah, 
Interesting. Why didn't they... Oh, they didn't have the mana for it. That's hilarious. Alright, so definitely batting. 100%. Take into demolition. I think we, yeah, we, we do take demolition, right? Yeah, because they can't push that much. And let's see, we don't just... Yeah, they don't have enough to kill us here. So we can go Poisoner on their turn. Interesting, they wanted land? Huh. Seems dubious. I guess they like wanted to live the dream of like Demolition plus Recruiter, but like that was never going to happen with our hand. I guess they didn't know that, though. All right, three, six, eight, ten. We drop to nine. Drop, yeah. We're certainly not giving them back demolition, though. I think we're, we just take it. So now we can poison her for two. Probably got to keep voice back. I guess we have to probably bat here, honestly, just to take away their recruiter. Knock. Yeah, I think it's the only option here. We just take away recruiter. At least now we have like voice in the air, which is really good. So they can't sneak by any like free damage. Yuck. Oh, boy. <laughs> Night Aaron off the top. Oh, gross. Oh, no. Oh, God. Make it stop. Make it stop. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right. Well, now we have to poison her their evangelist or probably just die. Okay, so yeah, oh, the problem is, oh, this is terrible because if we attack, they can block with bat. Yuck. So like we're giving them back recruiter. They can't do that. What do we do? Could try to set up for Angel, but I think the play here is actually just poison her and don't kill anything. If they full send, we can gain some life back on the blocks, like here and here. They're pushing two, five, seven, nine, twelve. But we're going up to fifteen. Yeah, I think that's the play, honestly. We just sit back with our bats, they kind of do nothing. It's uh, super <laughs> unexciting, but I think that's how we survive. Like we just need like n no more double pump here. Interesting. They're trying to go for like double warden. Okay, I don't think we die. 
Like we block here, we block here. Taking five, six, eight, ten, twelve. We're going to thirteen, so we stabilize at one. Yeah, that's game. That'll work. Woo! Got there. Let's see. Oh no, we're at one. <laughs> we can't actually do that. <laughs> Wait, no, we can... Yeah, no, we can't do that. We just swing for the for the win with the 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah. Nice. Well, cool. It was nice trophying with this deck. Um, yeah, definitely feel like it had some like major power. Let's get our sweet, sweet uh, rewards here. And then let's take a kind of like a quick deconstruct of the deck. So, what are my thoughts? Um... I think that the land count is highly ambitious um, with 21 sources. Yeah, I would bump that up for sure, especially since you have four Restless Fortress, which are all coming to play tapped, and two Shadowy Backstreet. So you've got six tap lands just right off the jump. Plus, you also have four Shattered Sanctums, which could be tap lands if you don't have enough lands in your opener. Um, you don't have a lot of stuff to do on one. And part of like the beauty of having stuff to do on one is it like makes these tap lands better. Because then you can have turn where you're like one drop, one drop, like fix your mana and then start doing stuff. Um, I think what I would do, I would probably cut some number of Respondent Angels. They do seem like a late game win con. And like they, while they are powerful, I might shave this down to like two copies like it definitely felt really good, but like there were games where like it showed up too early and I just like wanted to have other stuff. The bodyguard I think is fantastic. I think having this as a four of is actually a great idea. Um, it gives you protection against sweepers in a really unique way. Um, I don't know about four case. Um, I think four case makes sense if you run like a full play set of Amalia. Like Amalia and case are like best buds in the world. So probably... Po I'd probably go for Amalia, because like having extra Amalias is totally fine. And then I'd probably honestly just cut the Wandering Emperors. They just... It's not that... I mean, the card is an amazing card, obviously, but I feel like you just don't need it in this deck for what it's trying to do. So I'd probably like cut two Emperors, cut probably two Angels, and add in like Amalia... And probably three of the, um, oh god, what's the name of that 1-1 one, one flying bat that's lifelink? I'd probably put in some number of those. I think those are really important to have like early stuff to do. And they just are a great way to sneak in damage and kind of buff everything up. Um, the other thing you could do if, if you didn't want to go that direction is you could put in some number of like Knight Errant of Eos, which is still really good with this kind of setup. Um, Sarah Paragon <sighs> this is a tough one like I feel like it has a lot of power I don't know like if it ever came up or if it ever mattered um, I'm not against it I just don't know like if it's better to have like more early game probably honestly just like fill out some more land I feel like this deck probably wants like 23 land and that way like the Shattered Sanctums get a lot better. Um, I'd probably honestly also bump up the number of Iganjos and maybe even Takanumas. Um, or maybe more Murex. Like you could probably get away with... Actually, I think maybe one Murex is probably right just because you've got like all this double white. So I'd probably add like two Iganjos. And... Yeah, how would I build it? I would go like... Two more Iganjos, cut the Emperors, cut two Angels. I don't know about the Paragons. Like, go up to four Amalias, add in, like, three or four of the 1-1 one, one Flying Bat. That um, Anywhere between, like, two and four of those would be great, just to get some more one-drop action. And then the other consideration is maybe, like, some number more of removal. 
um, having like either cut down or go for the throat or like premium removal. Um, if you're really not worried about that kind of stuff, maybe running like March um, or potentially get lost as kind of like more versatile removal threats. So yeah, other than that though, I like the deck. It feels pretty strong. You could potentially also go up to like three shadowy backstreets and like two Iganjos. I feel like you want three Iganjos though. This deck just, like you can totally get away with three, maybe even four Iganjos. So yeah, thanks guys for watching and we will see you in the next one. But I would definitely, I think with those changes, I would totally be cool crafting this deck. Thank you.